Okay, welcome back everyone. So we're in the final round of Swiss for the New Zealand National Championship 2022. And, uh, you know, a little bit of deja vu. This looks like a similar <laughs> matchup to last round. Um, so we, we did our best to, to bring you all a uh, one of the winner in rounds. Mm -hmm. um, so I think with timing there are a couple of people who may have already started, um, but we thought this would be a good one for you anyway. We'll see if the if Ethan has better luck on Brian taking down the Iceland of this round. and. Yep. As we mentioned, this is a an absolutely clutch round coming up. Yeah, when when I, when I make top eight, loser, loser goes home. Loser, <laughs> loser goes, but still wins some money for top twenty four placement. But yeah, and a good story from Ethan here, who qualified through the last chance qualifiers. Yeah. Okay, and we're just kicking things off right so, away with a uh, coax commotion coming for four. Just um, a quick note on the equipment, because last round we saw Dan O'Brien elect to use the crown of seeds. We see Ethan here go for the sort of Nolan 3 plus um, Snapdragon Scalers. Yep. Also, notably choosing Snapdragon Scalers as opposed to the um, Spellbound Creepers mm -hmm. that Henry used last time. Okay, so just kicking things off coming for 4. Does he have the Lightning Priest? No? So Ethan's, Ethan was X3 at the start of the day, he's gone 2 0. Okay, yeah, well. Just needs to verse. Uh, this is I don't know what could be worse, Iceland or Oldham, but yeah. <laughs> um, it's definitely a little, maybe tough, it can go both ways. Yeah, because I, I know we had a very close bribe this Iceland game last round, and I um, spoke to another player, Kevin, playing an event who also had an Iceland or Brian matchup, and it went right down to the wire. Yeah, these matchups do are close. Oh, there's Ethan's favorite card. <laughs> okay, so Chatter like Rigid is established into an Aether Hail. Uh, notably, he has pitched a blizzard. Um, we saw two blizzards played to great effect last game, so that's oh, one of them okay. being shipped to the bottom. So maybe some small consolation for uh, for Ethan here. You know, until he sees the next one played next turn, eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm curious to see if Ethan is looking to play sort of a, I wouldn't say fully defensive, but slightly more defensive game plan with the access to the Nolan 3 here. Yeah. I feel one notable thing is that it allows them to stop the um, those Aether Ice Chain Blues. Uh, so being able to pitch a blue and prevent all of that damage and not get taxed. Okay, let's try and take four. Okay, so he's taking four here. Channel like Frigid. Yep, no missed triggers here. <laughs> and that Blizzard shipped away to the bottom. So okay. this tells me Ethan might have one or two blues in his hand? Yep, so just being able to, if you can power through the Channel Lake Frigid with, um, okay, so we're starting things off with the Lightning Surge, uh, that is costing one. <laughs> right, yep, so and he's pitching. There's that blue you mentioned. Because that's the thing, well, Channel Lake Frigid is a very effective card in these aggro matchups. Um, sometimes the Briar players who tend to play a few more blues these days are able to just power through it, and there's a Frostbite coming through at instant speed from the Amulet of Ice being played from Arsenal. I feel Henry's got to be pretty happy with the start, getting the channel like Frigid to mitigate the damage early into one of his sort of setup slash tempo cards. And he says, you know what? Why don't I prevent all the damage as well at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Ethan's coming in with an erase face. And just like he called it Newson, he had the two blues here, so. You know, I feel Ethan managed to navigate around that channel like Frigid very effectively here, with four damage into the sort of the race face coming into six. Yeah, so this race face can be quite impactful against Henry, right? Mm hmm. Uh, the hits, it turns off the uh, no card is ice. Yep. So the channel, if, if, he has two, if he has two ice cards that he wants to pitch to keep the channel like alive, he can't do that anymore. Okay, so. Henry electing to defend that up for six. Um, so that does mean the channel like Frigid will be hitting the bin next turn. So yep. I believe he's only got one card left in hand. I think Henry will just be arsenaling and passing. Okay, so no embodiment of Earth active um, for to create a priority window for Ethan. Ooh, looks like Ethan has a channel mount and an Earth blue in his hand. Okay, so that of is... <laughs> <laughs> of course he has the channel mount. Okay, so we're seeing the... Um, the channel's being uh, featured to their full effect here. Yep, there we go. Okay, let's see. Ooh, the brain freeze in response. Very good here. Is he going to fuse it? I imagine so. I think Ethan may just have one attack in hand. Let's 
So we'll see if that gets, you know, he has the force of nature of the Twine Lightning here. He may have an attack in Arsenal. But I feel that's a very good brain freeze here. Yeah. Basically saving him seven life. Yep. <laughs> so let's see if Ethan has the attack in Arsenal to follow up here. I mean, it's not a total disaster if he just has to pitch and come through a throw Zeta, but it's, you're not really getting the most out of that first yeah. uh, channel map heroic tick. Oh, he does see this lightning surge from the Arsenal, 7 go again. And then follow up with Rosetta for 2-2. Two two. Yeah, this is very nice him. And the Brain Freeze not being an ice card, so it's not creating that frost flight. Okay, so I feel like, yeah, Ian's, uh, so Ethan's doing pretty well in the early going here. Yeah, so, the interesting is, if he if he would like to attack with Rosetta for 2-2, two two, or he could just ask him a Force of Nature, for next turn and have a big, bigger turn because Force of Nature and Channel Mount one of the best combos, right? Absolutely. Every attack is basically a snatch. Okay, we'll see. I think he may go with that line here. Let's let's see. Okay, so it looks like there should be an embodiment of Earth coming down, which will create that priority window for Icelander. Okay, any, any moment now. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Well, missing the bottom of Earth isn't the biggest thing against Iceland, right? Yeah, just, just creating that priority window at the yeah. start of um, the action phase which triggers. Okay, so the Insidious Chill has come down. So now he has that Insidious Chill and a little vice sort of combo, if you want to put it that way, uh, which really lets you lean into these very effective, like, tempo swing turns, particularly when combined with Aetherite Spain. I think he's, is he pointing out the embodiment of Earth? He says, please, please create one of these. <laughs> I quite like keeping the force of nature, as you mentioned there, just setting up, you know, giving up four damage to set up like a really powerful turn. Okay, so the embodiment of Earth triggers here. Ooh, and the blue Aether Ice Man comes down. So that is not creating a frost bite. Now let's see if Ethan has the blue. So he does, let's see if that um, Arcane Barrier 3 pays off. The Insidious Chill is going to trigger here. So he's going to have to pay two resources or discard a card. Okay, it's going Nimalum for Insidious Chill. Okay, and then this is coming with the three, so I mean, while wow, taxing two cards here on a channel map row turn, very effective. I mean he does have the option for the amulet at rise as well if he wants to. Yeah. Um well, it looks like he does have a blue earth in hand. And it looks like a pulse of candle hold. Wow, and so that'd actually be really yeah. good if he's able to pitch the blue to the eighth ice vein. And use that pulse to keep the channel mount heroic around for another turn. And he has an attack. So, yeah. He could pitch the blue, play Force of Nature, Fuse, attack with Entwine for seven. Yeah, it depends on what happens with the Amulet of Ice here. I feel like even worst case, right, if he pitches the Earth Blue um, to the Earth Ice Vein and Henry sort of goes in with the Amulet of Ice, allows him to pitch the pulse of Candle Hold, keeping that channel mount heroic and coming in with the attack for seven, that would be very nice for Ethan here, I feel. Yeah. Okay, so he's pitching to prevent it all. Okay. Yeah, but right, follow up. So let's see if he. If he that's does actually it. yeah, that's actually fine because if he if he pitches the pulse for that, he has two earths. Yeah, exactly, and it stays around for another turn. And then his force, he doesn't actually have to use. Oh, so it wasn't. Oh, oh. so it's second that wasn't. Okay, oh, so look. Looks like he. It's a little bit hard for us to see Ethan's hand exactly here. Uh, so while it, uh, in theory, it would be nice. <laughs> So the force of nature coming down into the entwine lightning. So this is coming through representing seven damage here and draw a card on here. Yeah, so this is the impact, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's threatening an arsenal. Now, um, we just see the real power of these Icelander, you know, uh, taxing effects here. Imagine double minimalism with this having go again coming in for an obscene amount of damage. Oh, he has a two block. Okay, so he is going to take five. We'll draw. Body went, uh, draw a card. Let's see if we can pick what he has here. Okay, draw an erase face. It's not bad. Okay, and I feel, you know, well, not the best Shadow Mount Heroic turn ever, 
I mean, Ethan did manage to get through that amulet of ice, which I think is quite impactful. Yeah. And, and one in Seduce Chill Trigger. And, and, and he still does damage. Yeah, <laughs> let's, not, let's not forget that. An end of the turn with an arsenal. So, Aether Hail coming through for four here. I suspect Ethan may be pretty happy to take this. I can see a Bramble Spark in hand. I'm not sure if he's got the Fuse card. I mean, a Bramble Spark into, into an Ice. Not bad. Not, not too shabby, right? <laughs> not too shabby. And even if and even if uh, Henry gave him the Frostbite, he could still that play could still be possible for Blue. Yeah. And you know, we're just trying to see if we can peek at Ethan's hand here to see what he has. I thought I spotted something like a Tome of the Arc or a Blue there. Oh, I don't think he plays Tome of the Arc. No, I'm I'm pretty aware of Ethan's list. Oh, okay. But yeah, Ethan's just Ethan's is just a very standard Briodic, no, no, nothing too special. Yeah, and uh, okay, so pitching a nice turn to play the Channel Lake Frigid, ooh, it's pretty big. So not only creating that, you know, uh, tax effect of multiple turns, but also creating the Frostbite here. Pick one resource up. Yeah, so let's see, can Ethan continue the dream run, qualifying through last qu uh, last chance qualifier, and he just has one final obstacle yeah. to overcome to make the top eight. Yeah, so Ethan just going into the tank a little bit here. I mean, one thing for him is if he can sort of navigate this turn, maybe not quite as effectively as the last one, but if he can even put, pull something together here, that now means he's gone through two channel like frigids. Yeah, I think if Ethan has a blue in his hand, he should be he should be he should be happy. Yeah, cause something like pitch a blue into Bramble Spark fused into a race face. I mean, even just that is your turn. It's pretty good here. Yeah. So. Right now, Henry doesn't have an ice card in his arsenal. Mm -hmm. uh, in his pitch, sorry. So, I think he'll have to pitch an ice card to Waning Moon if he wants to keep the channel alive. Uh, no, because that will trigger the end of his turn. So, we'll stick around for... Oh, that, oh sorry. That's on the, oh, so he, pa uh, he passed his turn. Oh, yeah, because he, he dropped it in response to the embodiment of Earth. Okay, so uh, the... the um, so, unfortunately, it looks like he had a large number of red cards there. So, the erase face coming down for six. But, again, this is very effective because, similar to last time... And leads to the field of two cards oh, here. That's the first channel that can. Wow. Okay, so that, that leaves Henry with one card in hand, I believe. Yep. Um, so he's probably hoping it's, I mean, likely he wants to pitch an ice card to the Coronet Peak here to keep that channel lake around. Having an arsenal is too important in this matchup. Yep. Yeah, okay. So it's kind of a, not the worst spot for Ethan here. Ooh. I mean, clearly he would have really loved to have a blue that hand. Okay, so he's. Selecting to just coronet peak instead of. Well, I mean, Hypothermia was pretty. It would be pretty good in the Arsenal. Most of Briar's um, mm, attacks do have the word claws game go again. That's true. I suppose having to play multiple non attack sh actions into the channel like Frigid, he may have been a little bit unsure if he was going to get the, uh, the value out of that. Mm. Oh, and Henry uh, missed a tunic trigger there. We'll see if that comes back to haunt him. Okay, so Ethan electing to pitch a blue card to the Coronet Peak there. It looks like he has another blue in his hand, though, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. So he's going on a Swarming Gloomfield for free. Now, I believe that doesn't have go again, because he hasn't created... If it hits, it will have go again, because yep. it will create the embodiment of a right? Yeah, absolutely. So still kind of demanding a line card. I think I spotted a Lightning Press in his hand as well. Now, I believe Dan wasn't playing those last game, we didn't see any, so that potentially might catch Henry a little bit off guard here. I think Ethan plays Razor Reflex as well in this game. Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you were calling it a standard Brylist, but we do have some spikes coming right. along. Okay, so the Synchro is going to take care of that small Bloom Veil. So yeah, that current peak activation actually came through quite well. But yeah, I feel this definitely, uh, this is the consequence of uh, Ethan having those sort of four red cards the previous turn, having to pitch everything for the race face, not ending up with an Arsenal card. Okay, now let's see if Henry's able to keep that uh, channel like Frigid around for another turn. 
Three cards in hand, I believe. Oh, looks like even drew three blues and an exude. Hey, not the worst. Not the <laughs> oh, it's, it's pretty good in this matchup, right? Yep. Mo Absolutely. Mo most of the ice land is abilities. It's, is you can play an a blue card from instant, and they run a lot of reactions. Yep. Fake sinks, fates, and even oasis. Okay, let's see what Henry wants to do here for this turn. Okay, 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 that is a very effective turn here. So, and the Channel Wake Frigid is not going to stick around, um, but he has an Insidious Chill Trigger, and he, this 8th Ice Stand is coming for 5. Um, I don't believe Ethan has a way to prevent all of that damage. Uh, so we might see, as you mentioned, um, are you pitching something like two blues? One blue for the Insidious Chill, mm -hmm. and then a blue to prevent one of the Arcane plus made attacks. And this will allow Henry to set up the Frost Hex in the Arsenal. Now, from speaking to a few Ice players, Frost Hex isn't really central to their game plan against Briar. Uh, they feel it's often more of a tempo game plan rather than setting up that sort of big OTK like you might into something like Oldham or Bravo. Yep. But, I mean, at the same time, it's not bad to have down as an insurance plan, is it? But we'll see. I mean, potentially for Henry, he just doesn't want that clogging up his arsenal, forcing him to card. We may just see the waning win coming instead. Here we go, just a flurry of ice coming down. Let's see if I'm thinking what's his best line next turn. Yeah, probably just trying to navigate look like. If I. Um, what do I pay the chill tax? And I have ice tax to where does that leave me on my turn? <laughs> Just like you were saying. That's the thing about lightning press as well. It can be great for catching people off guard, but okay, choosing to discard the exude confidence here. Okay. So force of nature. I believe that's being pitched to. Okay, it looks like he maybe prevented one. And paid the tax on that. Yeah. I'm not sure if they've updated sure. on, on the life. Yeah, it looks like they haven't updated the life totals on the, the phones here, but they'll, they'll get that sorted. Oh, so a time of harvest. Okay. So this is quite cool. So this is going to shift away that lightning press that was actually getting a little bit trapped anyway. Yep. And draw them three new cards. Does there any flip the channel, <laughs> channel expense? Channel uh, bleak expense? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> That would be game breaking. Okay, let's see what Henry's got lined up here. But yeah, sort of creating that, you know, half a lightning token in a way, drawing three new cards. And City's Chill is actually down to one counter now as well. Yeah. One more turn of that. And then Henry will lose another lose another card that disrupt disrupts Ethan, right? Mm. Without him having the Scarter card. Okay. okay. Frost X. Yeah, so the Frost X came down, and I think both players were aware of that. So should be fine on that. So yep, so just creating the frostbite, you know, pretty good here. And like we say, the, the frost is just sort of incidental damage over the course of the game. Um, may help just keep things ticking along. Okay, so, you know, Ethan hiding his cards from so I think I see a snatch there. I see that exude as well. Yep. And the Muslim. Okay, Nimbleism into a Snatch for 7 with Go Again. This is when you cross your fingers and say, please no sink below, please, please no, no sink, sink below. Please no reaction. Because <laughs> this is quite annoying to deal with here, right? I mean, Icelander, you do have access to the Coronet Peak and the Tunic, but these are kind of quite critical to the, the long game. Yep. Even what I like to draw, you know, maybe a blue so you can swing with Reset after, but... Or this, just, even just a nice arsenal card to set yeah. up the next turn. Oh, he might, he might get one if the snatch hits right. Yep. Maybe Henry doesn't want to commit free cards to it. Mm. If, if he doesn't have the reaction. Exactly. Like you pointed out, having that arsenal is just so critical for the Icelander game plan here. <laughs> that giving up three cards, that's actually probably a totally fine outcome for Ethan as well. Yeah, it means Ethan will have a free turn next turn. Yep. Without any, without any distraction. Without any disruption. I think that's the last number listen, because I think he discarded two, two previously. Yep. Okay, yeah, so 
of this. Okay. Okay, so the Coronet pick is given up here, and I think that's fair. Um, you know, when we start approaching these mid-game, quite important tempo turns here, I feel you, he doesn't want, as you mentioned, to give Ethan just a completely free turn. Yep, and now, now Henry will probably move to the Arsenal, and, Hen and Ethan will be playing... Playing with four cards. Four cards, pretty, pretty good. We'll see if, um, potentially as well, if Henry set up something like an ice used card to take advantage of that Insidious Chill here. Yeah. But I think, on the other hand, Ethan's probably going to be pretty happy he's dealt with the Coronet Peak this early. Yeah. It really just means these breakpoint attacks are going to be, you know, in the critical sort of later game turns, a lot more difficult to deal with. Because Henry's last equipment that blocks is Tunic, right? Yeah, and that feels like a... You really Very want bad. these pieces, right? <laughs> yeah, you really want Tunic to survive. Okay, it looks like even drew another exude. That's the third one, I mean, if I'm not mistaken. It's actually pretty good for Ethan to pitch the exudes now. So in the if he gets to the leg again, yeah. it'll, be, it'll be filled with all blues from previous turns. Okay, so he's starting with exude. And Henry just having a quick look at the graveyard to see what he's dealing with. We might see a Snapdragon Scales usage this turn. Mm -hmm. So there's that sink below, but you know, it's not too good against exude confidence, is it? I yeah, especially when you can't when you can't defend you don't have any attacks to defend yeah. the suit, right? So I think Henry does run three clan of Hawkers in here um, for a bit of disruption and they are good against the exude. I don't think there's someone in his hand though. So that stick might actually be just be stuck in, yeah. his, in his hand this turn. Like you say, we'll see if um, the Snapdragon Scalus is committed. Okay, using two cards to defend. Uh, Snapdragon Scalers is, you know, it's a huge resource to have for Brian. Yeah. If you have Snapdragon Scalers in this turn, you need to, you know, output them. a lot of damage, apply a lot of pressure. So I think we can see this round's on me in there. Um, so that's a blue he's got. Is he going to just put the blue to exude? Puts this up to six. Okay, I feel the coax of commotion as a follow up is going to be very strong here because it's sink below. Is, is stuck, yeah. really, right? So, and as we mentioned, the coronet's gone for the break point. I feel, you know, Henry does have the option of the tunic block, but he's not going to be happy if he's forced to use that. Oh, here we go, Swarming Gloom Hill. Okay, so Henry does have a card in Arsenal. He may look to tax him here, um, which would shut down that coax play. Can't, um, yeah, that's... can't use sync. Oh. Wait a second. Can't use sync from exude, right? I believe so. We may need to. Yeah, this combat chain. Um, we may need to just. I uh, I've got friends Steve said he can hear us commentate. Okay, so, cool, cool, cool. so he will. Yeah, because the exude effect does last the entire combat chain. Yeah. So, um, so the the sync below here should. Okay, we're just checking in with the. Um, we'll just let the, the judges deal with this one because Exude Confidence does read, you know, the effect the Phoenix Hero can't play activate instance of defense reactions, this combat chain. The Snapdragon Scalers was used, the combat chain was not broken. Yep. Um, so, uh, I think we'll just need the judges to resolve this one. I mean, it seemed just, yeah, he just kind of forgot about it. So. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, one thing to note, the embodiment of Earth, um, for it is... Yeah, that means that Henry will be stuck with that sink in his hand next turn. He's, un he's unable to get rid of the no core in its peak. Yeah, and I guess the thing is as well, because that's a defense reaction, technically if you say no blocks and pass the reaction step, that just has been missed. There's no opportunity to defend it there. And now this coax is actually massive here, right? Yeah. Like, this is coming down for... Uh, I mean, Ethan also has knowledge of the sink below. <laughs> And I have a strong feeling this is going to create a quicken token here. <laughs> now, does he even want to give his opponent a card so he can ask them all? Like, we know the quicken's 100% coming. Yeah. But it's like, if he, does he want to draw an extra card? 
Yeah, it's actually an interesting one. I mean, he knows his opponent has the sink. <laughs> yeah. So do I want to draw a card here knowing that like, you have sink plus one card? And I'm not sure if he... I can't remember if he actually put down that last card to block the coats as well. So if he has information of that. Uh, but yeah, a bit of a, a costly mistake there by Henry. Okay, the quicken token mm -hmm. definitely okay. coming down. Um, is he going to draw a card? Okay, let's stop two. Looks like no, okay. I can kind of see that as well. He's thinking, look, you've got one card plus sync. So, okay, so the Eighth of Hail comes down. Can't quite see the color here. This does free up the arsenal spot for the sync below. Yeah, but there is no frost lights for Ethan next turn, right? Yeah, oh, I think he has one other card in hand because he didn't block the coax. Um, yeah, okay. So I think he may be able to, oh, I see, sorry, I see what you mean. If he, sit, if he sets up the sync, there's no frost white coming yeah. down. And also, if he pitches to the Waning Moon here as well, all that surprise over the sink low is just completely gone. Yeah. So it takes. Is that a. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what he has as a follow up here. Do you think he's considering holding onto the sink below and asking his other card? Maybe. Just to see if he needs to get attached from Frostbite or if he wants to keep. Okay, so was a red. I actually okay. just choose to ask him here. I'm not sure if I lost track of a card somewhere along the way or if he. Um... <laughs> even, th <laughs> even thinking Quicken triggers on those action cards? <laughs> okay, in fact, it's not. So, Ethan here is first attack, you know, um, he does have access to. Okay, okay and so chill. chill. So that would be in response to the embodiment trigger, I believe. Yep. Well, luckily for Eve. So Ethan does have a blue, I think, I believe I saw a force. So just when you get the, <laughs> the first Insidious down to one, the second one comes down. And now, these Ethan does have a cooking token, right? Yep. yep. So... That is a good threat here. Um, so it looks like he did hold on to that sink below and chose to arsenal the Insidious Chill to get out at instant speed and create that Frostbite. So Ethan will be aware of that, um, that if it opens with something like, you know, a breakpoint attack like a Snatch, that there is that sink below. But yeah, these two Insidious Chills are going to be very difficult, I think, for Ethan to deal with um, moving forward. Because now you're looking at four resources per ice fuse, which is uh, <laughs> very tough. To play force of nature. Okay, is he going to fuse? I don't believe, believe he's fusing. Okay, so he's coming with a sort of snatch for four. I wonder if he's having lightning press there. If he's holding lightning press. Uh, just because he committed both the force of nature and a snatch here, knowing his opponent has that in hand. And bear in mind as well that, uh, okay, Blizzard, mm. Blizzard, Blizzard's very good here. <laughs> so maybe, you know, Henry, bit of a heads up play, being aware of what's going on. Okay, I think they're just working out exactly when this is being played. I think that is actually... So you can actually Lightning Press in response to the Frostbite. Thump, pumping up the Snatch to 7. Yep, that's what he's going to do. Okay, so a good heads up play from Henry there. Sort of, you know, feeling that something was a little bit off. Hey, you know I've got the sink below. Why are you committing all these cards here? Um, so playing the Blizzard. So this is still a 7 power attack if it hits draw 2 cards. Yep. Even though it doesn't have a go again. It's still a lot of damage. And it's still a lot of... It, and it gives Ethan an arsenal. Yeah. Um, the one thing is, one of those cards is a little bit sort of wasted, I suppose you could say. Because yeah. Because he does have two cards. But hey, he's still pushing three damage here. He is still going to... Yep, he has ended up with that arsenal slot. And I'll be able to prevent the Frostbite from the Frost damage. That's true. Because, that's he a, two, because he has two cards. That's a good point. Oh, and he's striking so tomorrow. And that's the thing here as well. That's a really good point. And not only... I mean, we say a card is wasted, but it's not really. Because you get the selection of choice for arsenal card here between yeah. the two cards. So being able to both prevent that Frostbite and Arsenal the E-Strike instead of the Sotomara, that is actually very, very nice here. 
And that's, and that's the... Uh, we saw one Blizzard pitch to the bottom at the very start of the game, that's the second Blizzard here. I think Ethan should actually just take the one and keep a guaranteed blue for next turn. Yeah, I wonder if he's considering that. And is he actually thinking about asking the side tomorrow to return back a card, get the draw effect? Okay, he's pitching East Strike. Okay, so I mean, so tomorrow he will get to draw a card off that, and I mean, it does create half a lightning token, so you can get something back on top of the stack as well. Okay, so that was an interesting line of play there. So it, it did feel like he had the East Strike and Arsenal, hold on to the blue, take one arcane, like you said, to get around the tax effects. Um, choose him to go with an ultimate line here, we'll see if that pays off for him. does look like Ethan's hand. That's the thing, you, you, you would be kicking yourself a bit if you end up drawing four reds <laughs> and get taxed here. So Bramble Spark, and that's a blue weaver. I believe he just passed. Yeah, looks like he passed and didn't do anything on his turn. <laughs> okay, so tomorrow, so... And just played from Arsenal, it will be a will able to draw a card here. And the Kalining. And removing his triggers. Very good. Now one thing we really need to keep an eye on is those Insidious Chills. Because um, there are two of them established on the board here. So if he's able to play an Ice Huge card at instant speed from Arsenal um, at the correct time, if a four, you know, to basically get sort of a card away. Putting that channel out to on the bottom of his deck. Drawing a card. It looks like he's a race fit. Okay, so I believe that's a Bramble Spark red as well. So this is going to be a pretty beefy attack coming in. Okay, Swarming coming in for six and one. Six and one arcane? Potentially seven. Potentially seven. Because if the, if the Bramble Spark arcane hits, then he'll, make, he'll, he'll be able to make a second Second or of the turn, yeah. Ooh, okay, that hypothermia. Very, very good here. So, this is leaving Ethan with uh, two resources and two cards stranded in hand. So, we're really seeing the power of that card come down. Okay, still a big attack coming through. Yep, so the arcane damage has come through, so it's coming through for seven. That's the thing, I mean, it's, it's Ethan clearly would want to be following up with something like that, a race face or Rosetta. But again, he's still pressuring his opponent quite heavily here. Yeah, seven, and he takes he can't just not take seven, right? There's nine. <laughs> and the Command and Conquer coming out to block here. I did actually wonder if we we're gonna see the Command and Conquer uh, utilize that quick until yeah. some point in the game. <laughs> Taking four. Five. Um, I think they oh, might the arcane that. damage. Uh, I've updated that on the phone. I believe. Yep. So Ethan has a good life lead. Yep. It's so he used it, preventing that damage from the frost text there. Okay. So I think the key thing to keep an eye on here is those two insidious shields. Yeah. Because um, while there's a thirteen life lead and, and Ethan's you know pushing away here, I feel that Henry just needs one turn exactly like this. <laughs> so. Now, these Insidious Chills are taxing two resources each, and the Aether Ice Man is also taxing another two. I mean, I feel in a perfect world for Ethan, he has two blues here. Oh, it's Ethan, he usually has it. <laughs> <laughs> because if he has a two blues, he's able to use two cards to shut down, well, not quite shut down, but to pay for all of these tax effects. I know he has one blue, because he, he did keep a blue from last turn. Mm -hmm. But did he draw the second blue? Looks like he has... I think I spotted that race reflex that you were talking about earlier. Like coming in clutch, if you can put that, get that in the arsenal somehow. And I think that's a cold snap he's revealed to the 8th Ice Chain, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Um, so, you know, Henry does have that ice card available. So he does, it looks like he does have two blues. Earth Lore, Surge, and 
with tomorrow. So he, can, he he is able to do your play. We're still not sure what his arsenal is, right? Yeah. Now, the thing with Cold Snapper as well, being able to play that at instant speed to potentially freeze the arsenal and create a frostbite on top of making him use two blues this turn, yeah. it's probably going to be a pretty effective turn. Also, the Cold Snapping play from arsenal to okay. draw. It's this guy in the razor with four insidious chill. One of them's gone. Okay, so he's dealt with one of them. And the one thing, I don't know how many races he plays, but by, even if it's a one-off, by discarding one here, you kind of put the fear into your opponent's mind, which is, it's quite cool. But that is removing that chance to sort of pitch the two blues to shut down all these tax effects. Okay, so pitching two cards, so that's going to be the second Insidious Chill and the eighth Ice Vein attacks, I believe. But yeah, Henry's doing a good job of sort of grabbing back the tempo in this game, I think. Setting himself up for next turn to... Okay, it looks like he's just going to prevent some of that arcane damage here. Take two. Yeah, and he still has two floating in case Henry wants the Wayne Moon. Which Henry doesn't. Yeah, yeah, but looks like he just wants to keep that, um, that cold snap. So the embodiment of Earth is going to trigger here. Giving Henry a chance to freeze out that arsenal card. So Ethan choosing to pass and see if Henry has a response. Maybe put playing out the cold snap. The good thing here is like Ethan sort of identified that that cold snap was going to be freezing his arsenal card. So if Henry wants to play at instant speed here, um, it's a, the freeze effect isn't as relevant. Really. Yeah. And on top of that, the you know the frost the frostbite it's going to deal with damage, but it's not really taxing away his turn. Okay, cold snap comes out. I mean, of course it is relevant, it's going to draw the card, it's going to turn on the Waning Moon, which is going to come in for 3 damage, so just chipping away at that life total. And creating a Frostbite. So for an additional yeah, damage so as well. Even, even we'll be taking 4 damage this turn. 1, 3. Yeah, Frostbite. So that's something about that Frost X we talked about, that while it isn't sort of the central to their game plan, um, you know, just getting these little points of damage here and there is also quite nice. Just gives them the ability to sort of randomly spike a huge ice eternal turn. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm getting deja vu here. We see a red Aether Ice Vein into Colts now. Just chaining these off. And it really feels that uh, Iceland is starting to sort of really take back control of the game here. So you see Henry still has a card available. And he has another Colts now. Yep. <laughs> but if his arsenal is the first player place, Henry will not be able to respond with it because Ethan does not have a bottom move over Yep, and that could be very relevant here. So he's chilled down to one counter now, but again it's going to be taxing four resources. Um, Henry does have the card available to pitch to the waning move. So just a lot of damage coming through. We'll see if Ethan is able to lend to that sort of slightly more defensive plan of, you know, preventing a bunch of damage, or preventing three damage from the Ice Vein, um, preventing some amount of damage as well from the, the Waning Moon, and still paying the tax. There's the advantage of having this AB3 here that, that gives you a little bit more flexibility in how you want to approach the game. Choosing the tick. Discard damage? I think it's discard oh, it's the Discard chill, sorry. Is he going to take... Phillies? Okay, so he's preventing three, and pitching two to, three. to pay the tax. I quite like this play here. But even his turn wasn't that explosive, right? He's just grinding it out, keeping his life life total as high as he can, possibly can. Yeah, because you know, while your life, you know, it is a resource, of course, but, you know, keeping your life total high allows you some flexibility uh, to, at a certain point, say, when you've got the hand. Okay, so there's a little cutting in time, so that gets around that cold snap freezing play. And it gets him a card as well, so you have two cards to play with in his hand. Yeah. And that, so that, pull, that cold snap won't be putting in that much work. Okay, so the tuna counter being used here for the cold snap, very efficient play, creating the frostbite. Putting Henry up to a five-card hand. 
So, so I, I feel like Henry isn't out of the woods here, but he's probably feeling a lot better about this game than about three turns ago. Let's see if Ethan's able to draw a Ravenous Rabble or something and have a blue to pitch for Rosetta. Okay, that's quite a nice turn, I feel. We're going to snatch for four. Yep, so I mean, no Rosetta, but again, this break point of four coming down. Now, this could be the point in the game where Henry actually takes a long, hard look at that tune if he doesn't have the defense reaction. Yep. He, he used the counters, it's going to be three more turns till he gains some additional resource. Um, there may be a bit of calculation here if he's able to. No, just kidding, I'll take four damage <laughs> when you draw a card. I guess with the five card hand, your opponent on 18 oh, life. Ma channel mount. Mm. With five card hand, your opponent on 18 life. This might be where you look to finish off the game in the next two or three turn cycles. Let's see if we see another one. Ah, uh, yep. Okay. Ah, uh, the quicken. The quicken was finally relevant. Okay, and I think that makes sense why he elected to take the damage there. Because he says, look, I actually want you to have an arsenal card. <laughs> <laughs> so, my, so my CNC is, is threatening here. So pitching into this, and this actually opens up a potential CMC into a fused Aether Ice Vein, which would be like very, very rough to deal with uh, because of that five card hand from the um, the, the cold Yeah, that would be, that would be rough. <laughs> that would be very rough. He might actually have it because he did pitch an Aether Ice Vein. Yeah, and as my friend Carol likes to say, CNCs get the grease, ladies and gentlemen. Like, this is <laughs> a very punishing attack here. Okay, so it looks like they've just updated the life totals there. They may have not updated from the red at the ice vein. Oops, this seven. So that Shadow Mount Heroic number three, because he's used one, it's one Arsenal. Oh, and he did so have it as well. I think that's a yellow Aether Ice Vein here. And an Insidious Chill. Okay, but that is the last Insidious Chill trigger. Yep, so these so, are both gone. Wait, uh, there's one more in the deck, but it's gone from the thing. Yeah. Right? Now, I mean, while this is quite punishing, it depends, again, does Ethan have the blues here? Because if he's able to... Okay, well that's one red discarded to the Insidious Chill. Oh, and he has the blue to prevent free. And that's nice because the tax effect is now just not relevant. So the Aether Ice Vein, it dealt one damage, but Ethan's just saying, look, I'm just gonna sit on this Channel Mount Heroic, give you the turn back. The Frosting goes into Arsenal, um, but that tax effect is just not gonna be relevant here. So I feel Ethan is doing a good job of sort of identifying the pressure points of the deck here. Now that Frosting is representing uh, effectively two damage here, so the one plus a frostbite on frost X trigger. I think Ethan's counting how many A for ice <laughs> he's used. <laughs> <laughs> he has been hit by all that. He's like, surely, surely there's no more of them. So yeah, the frosting coming down for one damage, it's going to be one from the frostbite on the frost X, and most likely three from the waning mode. So Ethan will be on ten. At the end of the turn, most likely. Stormstride is still available as well. So, I mean, the Briar does, you know, Ethan does have Channel Mount Heroic set up, but he's starting to really, really get into that danger zone where, you know, Storm Striders plus Waning Moon turn um, is going to be effective at closing out the game. Okay, I think. Yep, so he's just thinking about what to pitch for the Waning Moon here. Okay, okay, it's Henry's turn now. Does he have any sort of disruption? So I believe he has three cards in hand. Now, the last thing Ethan wants to see is another Aether Ice Vein, yeah. <laughs> so Ethan does have two blues in his hand. Oh, three blues and a Coax of Commotion, I believe. Okay, so he does have the ability to line up that Channel Mount Heroic play. He's, he, right now he's probably praying, no disruption. Just, no, yeah. just <laughs> Please no CNC, please no Aether Ice Vein, please. Throwing out a you know, message to James in his hand, please James White. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Henry's really thinking about his play. 
kind of tells me that it doesn't have it, have the Eve Ice Vein. Yeah, so far the frost has just been freezing the earth, you know, there's yeah. no way for that Channel Mount Heroic to, to grow. Okay. Eat the hail. Okay. And that's blue, I think, as well. I mean, this is still going to be potentially 2 plus 2 damage with the Aether Hail plus the, the Moon. Now, I do wonder here if... Okay, so pitching the blue, that's round on me, to prevent effectively 3 out of this 4 damage. Now, Ethan's thinking, finally, I get to do my thing. He's been playing very disciplined so far, protecting his life total as well as possible. Um, now, he just is going to really have to hope that that Arsenal card or the Storm Strider's activation for a card in hand isn't just going to obliterate this CMC, um, this Channel Mount Heroic turn. Alright. Come on. Because so I'm 9, okay, so that resolves Coaxing Motion, comes down for 7. There's no going in on this. Now it is leaf sprinting lethal, right? Sprinting lethal. Yeah. I mean, the Tunic is able to, to come in front of this. Now, uh, you know, it's always frustrating when you have your, your Tunic on two counters and you're forced to defend with it. Saying, come on, just give me one more turn. But what if Ethan has lightning press here? Ooh. Ooh. And we have seen uh, multiple lightning presses this game. He's only used one. He's only used one. The other one's shipped to the bottom yeah. of the time as well. But it's good because cards like that, it, it is definitely, definitely putting the fear into its mind, right? Because the absolute last thing you might want to do, you're so close to qualifying for top eight and then you get thrown out by a lightning press. <laughs> oh, maybe. Is he... Throwing two cards? The thing is as well, I mean, he may even be baiting out a lightning press here if he has lethal. So he's saying, look, I'm going to block one, give you opportunity for lethal. If you show me that lightning press, I'm going to show you nine damage. Okay, maybe a... Ah, oh, the Isis Respite. Very good here, but we can see defend it with red and pitch to red to play that Oasis. I think it's... this is good for Ethan, I think. I was going to ask them all the cards. The he only has two cards in hand. Channel Mount Heroic stays in play here. Tuna counter is going up to three. Uh, Ethan removing the Channel Mount trigger. Good. I think Henry probably would have loved to be able to, you know, just use the tunic for that Oasis Respite. Yeah. Just playing Iron Wheel of Ice. Okay, so I think this, this is, is the turn. This is the turn. So, with all the marbles on the line here, what can Ethan present? He's got the Channel Mount Heroic down. He knows he's facing down Storm Striders, the Tunic Counter, and Amulet of Ice. Alright, start with Bramble, it's Fuse. Okay, showing, showing the blue. The blue. And bear in mind, you know, the Vexen Quill Hand could be relevant here. It does have the ability to create two Rune Chants to push through the final three points of damage. The Hino with the Storm Striders, Card and Arsenal, Amulet of Ice. And Ethan showing in the blue as well, saying, look mate, I'm basically on 12 life. <laughs> this is coming absolutely down to the wire. So I believe Henry is holding priority here. Yeah, he's thinking if he wants to use his arsenal or storm striders. I catch the tunic. Is this going to be Ice Eternal? It is, so that's coming down 10, that's 5 Frostbites, it's going to deal 5, um, 5 Arcane damage I believe, and create 5 Frostbites. Now, the interesting thing is here, right, if Ethan has access to multiple blues and a big attack, he can potentially push through a lot of damage here. And even if the whole hand is blue, and there's a tech in his arsenal. He... And, the, and the Vex and Quill hand are also representing two points of damage here. Because Henry only has a two. Oh man, this feels a little bit like last year yeah. with a, a certain game I remember on a prism, but... Oh, this is... I mean, he's really hoping that Ethan's got the blue and two reps here. Yeah, one thing to note as well, of course, the amulet. It kind of does look like he has three blues. 
くださいねと。So it looks like he's waiting to see if he prevents the arcane damage before using the amulet here.、Um, so, five frostbites. So, basically, he's potentially taxing up to seven resources here, isn't he? So, five frostbites and the amulet of ice representing seven. I mean, something like. I suppose if we look at it this way, right, even if he has three blues, something like in a race face, plus the Vixen Quill Hand, that would rip. Oh no, with the, that would be lethal. He's got the Channel Mount and the Bramble Spark. If he has a 0 4, that's, that's representing 10 damage. Actually, it would be 11 because of the 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus the Arcane plus the Vixen. Oh wait, so is he choosing to prevent the Arcane damage here? Okay, so. Okay, this means he's not going to be able to deal. He's not going to be able to push through here. <laughs> okay, so he did have the three blues. Alright, so. Oh, well, this will be taking one. So. Okay, so, I, I'm guessing that means he didn't have the attack and arsenal. But he. Oh, he did? He did pitch two Earths for Channel Mount. So he's kept the Channel Mount around. That's the big arsenal. And here he only has a Polar Blast in his, in his arsenal. Okay, so. <laughs> so、um, okay, so I, I mean, I'm guessing he doesn't have the attack and arsenal d e f e n s here because it felt like he would have been able to pitch the blues and come in for enough damage to close it up with the Dex and Cool Hand. And now Ethan has, priori has priority. Yep.、Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> Doing the same <laughs> thing, Bramble Fuse. Okay, so the Storm Strider is still active. No Insidious Chill, no Amulets down. He knows that there's a Polar Blast there that will be creating a Frostbite, will be drawing a card. And we're back to being on a knife edge. <laughs> I guess e t h a n won't be paying for d o m i n a t e effect. Yeah, <laughs> but,、um, <laughs> creating a frostbite, but e t h a n should be happy with that. He's got a blue in the hand. Okay, so four cards in hand,、um, Storm Strider is available. So effectively, he has one resource plus four cards here. It, it, assuming he uses、uh, Elix to use the Storm Traders. And that is a Weave Earth. Okay, so that was the card stuck previously. Okay, so that is making a lightning. So, priority. So, let's see if Ethan holds.、Uh, sorry, if Henry holds priority here. So, two resources available, two cards in hand, I believe. Ethan does have a l i g h t n i n g Strike in hand. And that l i g h t n i n g Strike will be coming in for 11 plus one. <laughs> Ping and drawing a card. Let's see if he draws a card here and if Henry wants to respond to the, the card draw. That was coming in for an absolute ton of damage here. I mean, It's actually coming in、yeah, 11 and 1 arcane. Okay, so this is representing 12 damage, still two resources available. This does have go again. I believe Henry is holding priority on card draw. Yep. He's trying to figure out if he can. Can I deal with this? Yeah. Because we've been talking about the Vex and Cool Hand the whole game as well. Like the Vex and Cool Hand plus the Rosetta is representing at least six damage here, right? Oh, looks like he's an ice eternal, he's ice eternal hyperthermia. It's pushing up to, up to 20 damage this turn. Okay, so we'll see what.
see. Okay, it looks like the Metacarpus, Storm Striders, Ice Eternal coming in. Does he? So that's only catching two. So that's only three damage. Uh, the the Metacarpus as well. So that's coming in. Wait, is he fusing this? Oh, we just said time in the round has just been called. Okay, so the Ice Eternal, it looks like, um, we don't have full information here, but it looks like he's paid six resources to do it. Yeah. Okay, so it goes down to two, so the moon is not lethal here, they still got two resources available. Down for 11, 12. Oh, he drove blue. <laughs> so I'm just trying to recall if they have dealt with the arcane damage from the. I think this is all done in response. I think Henry forgot about the. Did he forget? About the arcane? Yeah, yeah. If it's mentioning the arcane, eight. Eight. Now if he defends, this is coming down for... Okay, so he defends for 4 here. This is still coming through for 7 damage. So, now he's saying, please don't have the blue. Please don't have... Because he needs the blue, right, to... Yeah, if he drops... He pitches the blue. To oh, he's not... <laughs> he's not <laughs> wow! It's, oh! Wow! Wow! What, wow. what a finish! <laughs> I think that's that's game, right, Gary? I believe that's game because he doesn't. He doesn't yes. have to make that's game. That's game. Wow. Oh man, these these these, <laughs> these games. Are Icelander games, sir. Man, I know you guys are sick of the matchup, but these these come down to the wire, man. It was, wow. Wow. And Ethan completes the dream run. Last chance qualifier. Yeah. To a top to eight placement. Made it through to top eight. That is. That's one of the best games I've seen all weekend. I think yeah, I just have to say that was absolutely insane. Thrill, that was thrilling. It was just like, what I draw off the East Coast. Because it had to be the blue, right? As well, I think. Yeah, it had to be the blue. <laughs> <laughs> it had to be it. <laughs> when you got it, you got it. And I'm sure you can walk down, it says walking, it. Like, walking like the man. He said, oh, the pitch sack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, an absolutely heartbreaking for Henry there. Yeah. But that was an absolute, absolute thrill Henry, of the game. Henry, getting there, eh? So Ethan pulling through with the absolute thriller of a win there at the end. <sighs> Alright. Alright, so that's that's what's done. Okay. And now we're gonna move on to the top eight, right? Yep, so now we're moving on to the top eight announcement. Um, we're gonna take a a quick break from this, uh, while well, we have the top eight announcements um, and all that. We'll be back with you very shortly. Well these guys are gonna give me a heart attack. Yeah, I I need I need to, I need to step outside and get some air, man. <laughs> okay, we're gonna <laughs> We need to go get a breath of fresh air. What an absolutely incredible set of back-to-back -back Icelander Briar games. Yeah. Well, we we were thinking, you know, do we want to uh, do we put the same game on twice in stream? And I'm very glad we did. Yeah, this <laughs> game was came down to the wire, winning in. And I just want to say, Ethan, like yes, he needs to draw blue there, but I feel like he played that very very well through um, those multiple turns of just identifying. Look, I'm not going to take damage to get some nothing turn here. I'm just going to keep pitching away, preventing the arcane damage, minimizing the tax effects as well as I can and setting up the channel mount heroic turn to win. And at the end, he put himself, I mean, yes, to be fair, he needed to draw some blues there, but he actually put himself in a position to win the game, which is, you need to play to your out sometimes in flesh and blood, and that's what he did. So, massive congratulations to Ethan. Obviously, commiserations to Henry Moore. That has to be absolutely heartbreaking. There is a chance. I don't actually, you know, the tiebreakers, we don't have completely perfect information on those, so maybe there's a chance he sneaks in, maybe he ends up coming ninth, but, Ooh, 
That's it. That's what threw us.